All right, and welcome back to Altcoins FM. My name is Matt, and I want to say, like I always do, thank you so much for tuning in and checking out this video. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up my chat. Uh, everything seems to be on the green on my end when it comes to sound quality. Uh, it doesn't seem like we're having any issues, actually. So we can go ahead and start the podcast, uh, not podcast, but the episode. Uh, yeah, so just like the title says, uh, I'm personally going to be stacking up on Theta. I think that we're going to see a lot of great things for Theta here coming soon, especially come December, January. Uh, I know right now we have a good market dip. Uh, I personally bought in heavy with Theta. I'm trying to get to 1,000 uh, personally so I can start sta uh, staking the Theta. And then the same thing with uh, 10,000 T fuel. So, uh, of course, I know that there are several coins that a lot of people can kind of jump right into right now, uh, especially with the market kind of dipping down. I get it. Uh, but uh, if you bear with me, I'll actually at least support the reasons why I believe uh, Theta is going to, to really skyrocket here soon. So let me go ahead and share the screen. And then we'll drop it down. Yep. All right. So currently sitting around 707. Uh, it is dipping down to 688, which I'll probably end up buying more. I'm hoping it hits right around the $6 range. Uh, but jumping right into what's going on with Theta. So aside from the fact that they're you know climbing each and every month when it comes to members joining their network, uh, the developers are working pretty hard when it comes to really uh, spreading out the ecosystem, uh, bringing in a NFT marketplace known as T-Drop, which we'll cover here in a second. Uh, but they're also getting major partnerships with no names, uh, right? People like Katy Perry, something that I mentioned in the last episode about Theta. And the closer we get to these dates, I think we're going to see a lot more celebrities jump into the NFT world. We're already kind of seeing it with people like Mike Tyson, uh, Gary V, of course, Mark Cuban. Uh, I know that there are several partnerships, I think with Chili Z, for example, with uh, NFL franchises, uh, VV, for example, they have a lot of partnerships with Marvel, DC, uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, so Katy Perry, in my opinion, is one of the very first people to step in, actually, and uh, go ahead and try to take the risk with the NFT. And I do believe it's going to be a lot of success, especially because what Theta is offering when it comes to their decentralized streaming network. Uh, not only that, but her fans will be able to get NFTs that are customized for, for her, uh, that are one of a kind, that won't be just up on the open sea, for example, that are made just from Randy, you know, uh, random randies uh, there we go uh, but yeah so if we jump over to the actual roadmap the one thing that i want to spot out not just from the t drop token released in the nft which don't get me wrong uh, that is going to be very very huge right i mean extremely huge we're seeing massive adoption when it comes to uh, towards nfts we're seeing a lot of blockchain games take off especially because of the fact that they have nfts within their ecosystem so we have the nft marketplace coming soon with uh, t drop uh, for those who are curious is how to go about uh, obtaining T-Drop. There will be an airdrop for T-Drops according to the white papers. Uh, depending on how much you're staking and for how long will be the you know percentage in which you receive in your airdrop. So you have to be staking Theta and T-Fuel in order to receive airdrops from T-Drop, uh, which is why I'm actually trying to get to my Theta and T-Fuel goal sooner than later to start staking and really try to get in on that uh, a T-Drop airdrop. Man, that's a tongue twister there but they also have this cross chain bridge from ethereum uh, over to theta and essentially what this means is developers who have projects will be able to convert or you know uh, take their project on the ethereum blockchain uh, and plug it over to the theta network and it runs i'm not saying that it's going to be extremely smooth right off the bat even though i think that's what they're working on my wager is that it's going to run pretty smooth uh, they're not shy from you know holding back mainnet launches for example they're not shy of a few delays if it means that they're offering a way better product uh, in the end after all first impression uh is first depression for a reason you don't really get too many after that but there's an extremely extremely important thing that i think we're missing here when it comes to the very last quarter of 2021 because everyone is paying attention to the t-drop right now in the nft marketplace and trying to get in on the airdrop for this i believe that the the thing that we're really missing here is the fact that they're bringing over smart contracts so if we check over quarter three we have the official data app for ledger release we have the uh, RPC adapter coming through. We have the ecosystem, the T-Drop uh, token white papers, which did get released, uh, which I have right here. 
Uh, then it talks about the edge node uh, edge node software support. Uh, but as we go along and you read into it, especially within the white papers, you will eventually come across the fact that they're bringing over smart contracts, right? And if we take a look really quick at just random smart contracts that have came out either recently or two to three years ago, uh, years ago in comparison to Ethereum, uh, let's look at Phantom, for example. So we go back and we check out their one-year stat. So we have them at their all-time height back in uh, May 2021 right around 91 cent. Uh, they touched that by about uh, 70%, sitting at $1.40. From there, you know, uh, the previous all-time height was 65 cents. So we have almost about a 220%. If you go from where the actual climb started happening, right, which is why I think Theta is kind of in this phase right now, uh, and I'll compare it to exactly what I mean by that. You know, this is sitting right around, what, two cents? Uh, so this is about a times 50 times 70 gain at its all-time height. If we go over to Theta and we check out their one year, I uh, don't really know what happened there. CoinGecko has been acting up extremely a lot lately. Sorry, guys. All right. So if we go to their uh, max, right, because it's a little bit more than one year when it comes to Theta. All right. Uh, it's not wanting to... Uh... I guess we're going to coin market cap. That's weird. I guess they're doing updates right now. I know I was experiencing issues with them earlier. Um, I wasn't expecting that to happen. All right, here we go. So if we check out Theta at its all-time uh, height, uh, so far it was $15.90, right? And right before that happened, we were sitting around, uh, we'll say $1.40, $1.50 on average, all the way up to $2. So we'll say $1.75. So we saw roughly about a 10% gain right here. Now, if we go back to Phantom, Solana, uh, ADA, Polkadot, it doesn't matter which one. We'll go to the, the main three, Solana, Cardano, and uh, Polkadot, right? And we check out their max. Now, remember, they're smart contracts. Okay, it isn't just uh, Theta. It is CoinGecko. So sorry, guys. We're going to have to convert everything over. Okay, we'll just stick with these right now. All right, so if we go to their all-time height, right, and we check out Solana, we see where it's bubbling right here around, you know, $3, and I'm sure if we go low enough, we'll find, you know, the, the first spike right there, right? If we check it out, it's, you know, mounting, it's starting to build. And so right here, we have about a $17.03, right? And then we saw a climb up to $28, and then from there to 50, and it just kept on climbing, right? And then here recently, if we go to Solana's all-time recent chart, we have around $173. If we check out uh, uh, Cardano, the same thing, right? We'll see a very similar buildup. So we have it right here. We're coming up. We hit an all-time height of around $2, I think is what it was back then, a uh, 2.30. And then it retested that. It went past that all the way up to 3.10, I believe is what the all-time height for ADA was here recently. So I believe we're going to experience a very similar growth a growth to that of theta except for if we look at theta's chart right and we can see that hey this is really the first time that it's grown it's consolidated back down it's kind of sitting right here because this is fairly a you know relatively speaking a small market cap when you compare it to solana and, and cardano so the fact that they're building the smart contract the nft marketplace they have patents on their decentralized streaming networks there's all of these bullish signals in my personal opinion that tells me hey in this dip out of all the coins that i'm going to be buying right now Theta and T Fuel are probably going to be the main two that I'm stocking heavy upon. Now, that's not to say that I'm not going to put some in a VRA Veracity, for example. I, I you know, love that project, but Theta to me is showing really good bullish signs. So if we check this out and we were to compare it and we were to say that, hey, this right here in Solana is what Theta is right here. Uh, we'll say the average, right? So we'll say, what, $9? And we do the same thing with Cardano, right? And we go back to the all-time height and we see this nice little, you know, gradual jump before it's, you know, retesting its height. 
I think we're going to see the same thing with theta here. So not only do I think that we're going to see $15.90 come December, but I think that we're going to pass it kind of like what Solana did here recently and go to 2025. I mean, after all, the streaming industry is roughly about a 50 billion streaming industry uh, dollar industry right now. Uh, that's not to mention all their partnerships, right? That's not to mention all of these other billion dollar companies that are revenueing too, right? Off of their, you know, streaming services, right? And we look at, if we do go to their partnerships and we do go to look at their team just a friendly reminder you know these are solid backers from sierra ventures to the venture reality fund to sparkland to sony uh sony innovation fund to uh where's the other one samsung i know google is backing them when it comes to being one of their main validators uh they've got the you know co-founder of youtube uh they've got people from plays tv sony g fuel twitch uh microsoft verizon the list goes on and on and on and here's their partnerships so they've got the uh the lionsgate the Katy Perry, they've got the NASA World Poker Tour, the Mystery Science Theater 3000. I had a friend that used to watch a lot of those episodes. When it comes to cryptocurrencies and blockchain, Clayton, Chainlink, we have Ultra, right? We're sitting on what I what I would consider a, a gold mine right now, right? A solid, solid gold mine. And it's just a matter of time until these things start coming out. Not only that, they do have T-Swap, just to bring that up. And this goes back to the whole smart contract or not T-Swap, Theta Swap. And so it's obviously still being built right now. You know, we've got the pool. You can always go in here. You can always provide liquidity once they get it going. Uh, I have personally created some, uh, my own uh, token called CRED for credibility so that you can give it out for people who are, you know, really good on their content. For example, they provide, you know, trustworthy content. Uh, people can get them out at, there's no real value for it. It's kind of like a meme coin, let's be real. Um, but yeah, so that kind of draws me to my conclusion. This wasn't going to be a long live stream. It was going to be one of those quick get on today. Uh, kind of talk about where my head is when it comes to the market right now. Uh, and something that I do expect is going to happen for Theta. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions, if there's any coins that you're wanting me to look into, uh, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer those. Oh, wrong one. Yep, uh, that's really it. I mean, all right, guys, it is 728. Uh, that was the 15 minute update for the day. I will be coming live every day, probably right around the same time, 7 to 715 for about a good 15 minute update on what's going on in the market. Uh, I will keep you up to date on Theta, Veracity, a UBT, a UOS. Uh, there's quite a few that I invest into. VV, uh, well, not VV, Omi, but man, I'm I'm waiting for that Star Trek drop tomorrow. Um, so I'll probably make an update about Omi here soon. But no, other than that, I did want to say thank you for those who tuned in. It means a lot. Uh, this is Altcoins FM, uh, Chain. Well, LR, I don't know. So VeChain has its pros and cons. So it's more centralized than other blockchains. Um, you know, a lot of people don't like that. I do know that one of, you know, one of the best arguments against that concept as far as uh, anti-centralization is that a lot of companies uh, tend to succeed when they do have power of majority of their company, right? Um, compared to, you know, maybe other defo uh, decentralized forms of those businesses. However, VeChain is a smart contract platform. I know that they're working on a new update to their proof of authority. Uh, I think that they're also bringing NFTs uh, over to their platform if they haven't already, like the VeChain punks, I think is what I remember reading here recently. Um, not only that, but I know that they're a major, major player in China. You know, even though China seems to be, you know, bipolar with the whole banning Bitcoin mining or whatever, um, all that FUD. I do know that uh, they have contracts with China. So does NKN when it comes to the internet uh, company, as far as the, the Web3. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't see why VeChain couldn't succeed in its own right. I think it's going to be, you know, slightly different than the rest of the cryptocurrencies when it comes to the way it revenues and grows. Um, you know, the question really is, or the question here to me is, 
Will majority of the people in the world really care about decentralization as, as much as the early investors into crypto, right? So the whole point of the early investors is we did want decentralization. We didn't want all of these powerhouses to continue to have the power and to manipulate the market the way they were. Uh, we didn't want inflation to curb all of the people's life savings and hard work, you know, with inflation. So, you know, the, that's really the question. Will the core value of people who jumped into cryptocurrencies for the the original reason still be persuaded, you know, later on, as far as the people who are jumping in now or later on, will they, you know, will they share that same core value? Uh, I doubt it. You know, I, th I think that we're going to have a mix of people who really don't care if it's decentralized or centralized as much as it, you know, does it work? Does it do what it says it does? Uh, does it help me make money for people like us? Um, yeah. I mean, so I, I think V chain is a bullish coin. I just think that it, you know, it's a, um, it is a centralized blockchain. Uh, on ETH to get theta. So, you know, if you were to right now, I think this this is what kind of separates me from a lot of the, uh, the other crypto tubers. You know, if you were to ask anyone right now, what do you believe Ethereum is going to be by the end of the year? The majority of the people are going to spit out this number of $10,000. And that's not to say that there's not potential for it. I, I personally don't think we're going to get there. I really don't. Uh, I think Ethereum might touch five, five and a half grand, maybe six, right? But I don't think that it's going to touch uh, 10 grand and hold. If it does, it will be for a brief moment and consolidate back down 30 you know, 35% uh, down to that 6,000 marker. Um, I do know that with the staking option, more Ethereum coming out of the thing, you know, Ethereum is likely to, to go up. Um, however, when it comes to theta, as far as, you know, should you sell some Ethereum for theta, my goal is to get to 1,000 theta. So right now that's roughly, you know, six and a half thousand dollars worth of theta. Um, I do have around 500 that have been just average cost buying since my very first video six months ago, seven months ago about theta. So, um, you know, right now it would maybe cost me about $3,000 to get the rest of my theta and maybe an extra grand to get the rest of my T fuel. Uh, that would, if you're interested in getting theta, remember, I'm not a financial advisor. So always do your own research and your own investment at your own risk. But, you know, I would at least aim to get to a thousand theta to participate in the staking uh, program. And then you also get airdrops for T drops. If I'm not mistaken, T drops is going to have the same uh, tokenomics and coin ratio as uh, theta. So 1 billion T drops and that's it. Right. And so there's going to be incentive for people to hold T drop. I believe that they get rewards from the transaction of the T fuel being burnt. Uh, and then they also get the governance ability. Right. So the ability to vote within the governance system of T drop and how it should work. Um, so yeah, so if you're interested in, in theta, I, again, this is just, you know, my personal opinion doesn't mean I'm absolutely right. Just remember that. I mean, just because, you know, I'm a nice sounding Southern man doesn't mean that everything I say is golden. Right. So, um, <laughs> no, I'm just joking there, but no theta, I, I, you know, personally speaking, I, I am going for a little bit more than a thousand. Ultimately, I do see it hitting, I do see it hitting $50 within the next year and a half personally. So, you know, I did sell some of my Ethereum when it hit 4,000 here recently, um, just to put into other projects like Veracity, right? Uh, w before it started uh, climbing when it was sitting around, what was it? Uh, I know on June 20th, it was like 0 0.009. So I knew that was a, a, a steal. So I went ahead and dropped, you know, a good grand into it. And then I re-upped on some more veracity here recently. Um, and that was because I sold some, some ADA, not ADA, but uh, Ethereum. So... Yeah, as a VIP. Yeah, I think so. You know, I, personally, yeah, as long as you understand it's not financial advice, I, I agree. I think that Theta's growth is going to outpace uh, Ethereum. Just hear me out. So let's just say that the projection for 10,000 of Ethereum is correct, right? That's roughly about a two and a half percent, uh, two and a half times right there. So 250% gain, right? I personally think Theta is going to hit $20 by the end of the year. And I don't think that's unreasonable. We hit $15.90, not even three months ago, four months ago, right? So almost, what is that? Four fifth of that goal, right? And so from its, from its current position right now at $6.88, unless it's went up again, let me go ahead and check the price. So $6.97, right? If it were to go just to the $15.90 and not explore new heights, just that, 
right? I mean, you're talking roughly about, well, now a little bit more than 200%, like 210%, so 2.1 time gains. If it does what I think it's going to do and go to $20, then that's a 300% gain, right? And so, yes, that would outpace Ethereum. And I truly think it's going to go to $50 in the next year and a half, um, around the same time that I think Ethereum might hit 10K as far as a year and a half from now. Uh, and that, if that's true, then you're talking about a 800% gain. So, you know, almost a times four on percentage profit in comparison from Theta to Ethereum. But yeah, so I mean... I mean, let me put it this way, uh, within my admin group, um, today, I, I've been keeping in touch with them the whole day today, uh, right when I, I was literally on my exchange when Theta hit $6, no joke. And I, and I swooped in and I bought like 800 and, you know, like $20, $830 worth. Um, it, when it shot back up to like $8 and 50, $8 and 70 cents or whatever it was, uh, retest, um, on hot bits. Uh, I, I don't have the hour increment here, but um, let's see. Yep, and then $7.50, and I think on Hotbit it went for like $7.80. Um, I made like twelve forty eight. I think is what it was, sold it, and then literally right when it went down to like $6.40, I think is what it was right here, uh, went ahead and swooped back in and got about 550 tokens, so I'm, I'm happy about that. All right, is there any other coins that y'all want me to look into? I can check out VeChain to see if there's more news about it, but I think that I've covered most of the updates I remember reading about here recently. Now, I will say there's a lot of uh, uh, upside to veracity, by the way. So uh, I know I tend to talk about veracity a lot, and that's fine. I don't care uh, because it's one of my favorite gems. I do believe it's a, a sleeping giant. I think it's just going to be a matter of time until this bad boy is is touching about a you know a dollar to two dollars. So just something to keep in mind when the rest of the market crashed. You know, don't get me wrong. So did veracity. It was touching right around four cents, but it only dropped down to three and a half cents. Right. So now that's that's roughly about fifteen twelve percent. When the rest of the market was dropping 35 40 percent so veracity uh, held its strength to me i think it is safe to say that even with this dip that the bottom of veracity is sitting right around two uh two and a half cents maybe a little bit more so right around three cents to three and a half cents is where i think veracity's bottom is uh, give or take a little bit there so you know i think it can go as low as two and a half cents at some times uh, however if we go over and we check out their uh, their Twitter because that's where I'm keeping up with their um, their news believe it or not they did just release a few a few updates uh, the fact that they're bear proof so here's how they they have their actual beer of view oh that's what it is uh, so there's been some fud about veracity so here recently veracity was very transparent uh, they announced the fact that they were creating this uh, side chain uh, called you know uh, vera b for example to run the actual veracity protocol uh, it would be off chain closed system essentially just to make sure that they're keeping track uh, of all the information ensuring that the bots are the bots and the humans are the humans and being able to real time instantaneously update uh, those who are paying for advertisement to prove that their advertisement was seen by humans right and so a lot of people started spreading this fud for some reason i believe that there's a competitor of veracity that just got released uh which i don't really understand how their competitors seen it as you know veracity has multiple patents for what they're doing but veraview is a side chain it is not part of the actual veracity protocol in the sense that it's going to affect the price uh, or impact the price uh, veracity is the main token for the vra protocol uh, so for those who may have seen that news i've got a little bit worried there's nothing to worry about um, they went into heavy depth in this past ama to talk about um what was it how it won't impact the actual uh, price of veracity and how no one will really will even notice it it's really meant for the advertisers paying for the advertisement is really what they're using it for uh, and i'm sure that that is a very simplistic way of describing the tech behind it um but the one thing i did want to bring up is what happened on september 6th so yesterday when i saw them uh, retweet this 
So collectors buy fake Banksy NFT for over three hundred and fifty thousand or three hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. Pardon me. So you know, don't get me wrong. Some of these NFTs, I'm going to be honest with y'all. You know, I don't get right. You know, I look at these punks, these crypto punks, and I'm just yeah. You know, I don't get it. You know, I get pixel art. I get it. It's just not my thing. Uh, but then again, art is sort of subjective, right? You know, the values in the the eye of the beholder there. Um, and so that's not to say that there's not art or NFTs out there that I wouldn't spend a pretty penny on. So, for example, when it comes to VV and the Omi uh, coin and their, and their network, right? They have a lot of cool NFTs coming to their platform. Uh, yes, you can't really use it for games right now, uh, but I do believe that they're probably working on something like that in the background. It would be kind of ridiculous not to, to have all of these licenses to create these NFTs and not to use them for more than just art. But then again, they're really nice art pieces. Uh, and they're about to release the uh, Star Trek drop here soon, right? And so here I'm reading about this, and it's so funny because I actually read about the news about the person being scammed out of the fake Banksy NFT before I read the retweet from Veracity. So can you just imagine what he's saying here? This can't happen with Veritech and without it, artists will run for the hills, right? And so, you know, I, I, he, he's right. You know, this this is the protocol that is going to be known around all of the internet as the, the network that's going to prove, hey, is this legit? So, you know, I think about Carfax, right? I think about 10 years ago when I remember seeing the commercials about Carfax, people going to buy these cars at dealerships, everything looks pretty, they go to leave and then the, the bumper just falls off, for example, or they stop at the stoplight and the tire just keeps going, right? Uh, and then the Carfax guy would come out like, hey, did you check it out? Or woman, I don't know which one, uh, you know, did you check it out Carfax? And so now Carfax is a major company that helps verify the integrity of cars and vehicles that you're buying from, you know, your normal everyday dealers, right? And so I think that this is going to be very similar for NFTs uh, and other concepts when it comes to, because right now I think a lot of people are thinking NFTs as uh, art, right? I don't. I think of NFTs as essentially one-of-a-kind items. So when I think of that, I think of the deed title to my house. It's one-of-a-kind, right? If you have that, then you own my house. And so I can see as we're going advancing into a digital world, NFTs becoming more and more like bonds, right? A certificate, a deeds, your birth certificate, uh, your social security number, uh, those kind of things. Now, whether or not we want that on a blockchain is a different question, but you got what I'm getting at, right? Those are, to me, going to be the things that are going to be crafted into NFTs as well. So having a technology like this that can verify what it is that you're actually buying, viewing, entering, whatever the NFT is, uh, being what it is, I think is priceless. I think that's, you know, one of the best safety features we have in cryptocurrencies. You know, a lot of people consider the crypto world as the wild, wild west. And in several ways, I would actually agree with that without argument. And if so, then I would believe that veracity is probably the first sign of some kind of um, community enforcement, you know, not allowing regulators to come in and claim what is and what isn't, but, you know, within the community building up this neighborhood watch, we'll call it, right? Um, so, yeah, so, you know, again, I'm feeling very bullish on Veracity as well. I truly do believe that this is a $140 billion potential company, especially because that's roughly what they're fixing with their solution when it comes to ad fraud. I think it's only a matter of time until they get their fair, you know, credit and fair due of that. Um, you know, I'm not expecting it overnight. I do expect it to happen in a year and a half, two, three years to probably go up to that four, five, six billion dollar marker. And then from there, you know, the sky's the limit. I mean, we saw Solana jump, you know, up to 30s of, you know, billions of dollars within a week, you know, so I, I don't think it's unimaginable, especially with what they're doing. Every smart contract platform right now has NFT markets, uh, blockchain games coming to it. Uh, I don't see any of them talking about the the verification or the ability to you know to prove that it is what it is and it's you know it's worth the value that it has um so i think veracity is going to be you know heavily used in several ways more than just as a proof of view concept for advertisers so yep yeah. Yeah, uh, Fabio, I would say what LR says is right. When it comes to Theta and T-Fuel, you know, to me, I used to think that T-Fuel was bearish and Theta was bullish, right? Because T-Fuel has an, an, an inflation rate. Man, that is a tongue twister right there. 
uh, but T Fuel, uh, with the mainnet 3.0 launch and updates to the white papers and the tokenomics and the burn mechanism, so 25% of all uh, transactions on the Theta network, whether it's in T Swap, NFT Marketplace, um, uh, you name it, right? Uh, if, if you're using T Fuel to purchase or to you know transact. 25% uh, of that's going to be burned. And out of that, um, you know, the remaining, I believe some of it will go to the node, or I think it's like 3% inflation to the uh, Elite Edge node runners and Guardian node runners, right? And so it became more of a bullish, excuse it became bullish for me because T-Fuel became a, um, a somewhat of a deflationary token because the more people that use the network, the more T fuel will be will be burnt, and I believe that more will be burnt that will offset the inflation of the nodes. So to me, both of them are solid investments. I, I personally don't think you can really separate the two. I think it's a safe haven to try to get both. Uh, just remember, Theta only has one billion. So once all one billion is bought, you know you can't buy any more Theta. T fuel um, is an technically it does have in an inflation so it will be able to produce more now whether or not that burn you know burns it so much that you you're not able to buy it or you know it's expensive to buy it i should say is a different question but um as far as audio audio and audius vip i mean that's actually one of my favorite uh, disruptors for those who followed me way back when it was below a dollar right i mean multiple times i think especially with the what is it may 20th crash and then the June or July 20th crash. I can't remember which one it was. Um, but both times that, that coin hit right around a dollar. I think at one point it hit like 88 cents. Uh, I think that was right around the first video that I made of audio. Uh, I believe that it will return back to its all time heights uh, here recently for $4. Um, they have a major partnership with TikTok. And to me, if there's one thing that YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok has really done, it's brought out artists, right? I mean, it's brought out a lot of different kind of artists. I mean, the streaming industry is, is major as it is with the advertisement and the sponsorship but the artistry part of it is just you know blooming is i mean technically you could consider what i'm doing right now as a form of art right as like an academic art right like because i'm you know researching and kind of you know diving into these coins i wouldn't say that per se you know i wouldn't consider myself an artist but i am a content creator right and so um audio being you know centered around the music concept yeah i think that um I think audio will return back to fall four dollars before probably before the end of the year. I mean, I know that they have major adoption going going on right now, um, especially with their partnership with TikTok. Uh, and TikTok is you know one of the largest streaming industries or excuse me um, streaming platforms there are right now. So uh, there is right now. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't know about the price prediction as far as twenty twenty two goes. I would maybe say. You know, I mean, I guess it would depend on the rate of artists jumping over right now. It's in the early stages, so we could maybe see an exponential growth. I mean, I'm, I'm really trying to think that through. You know, I don't know percentage-wise how many artists are on there, right? Uh, but let's just say 1%, and I'm pretty sure that even that is being conservative, right, out of all the artists out there. But let's just say 50%, and I think audio is very reasonable to be a $50 coin. I mean, it has 1 billion tokens or coins, Um and the music industry is roughly about a $50 billion industry only expected to grow by, you know, 10, 20% every year for the next 10 years, if not more. I don't see music going anywhere anytime soon other than staying, right? Music has been part of humankind since the beginning of humankind. So um, I'm bullish on audio. I own audio. I did, you know, I sold it at the $4 height. I knew it was going to probably hit some kind of consolidation. I was worried that it was going to hit $6, but thank goodness uh, I, I was right on that one. Uh, and I literally took that profit and just bought more audio with it. So, um, but then again, I don't encourage trading. I don't really trade. It's really only in those moments where it's kind of common sense. Like, wow, it just went from a dollar twenty cents to $4. It's definitely going to consolidate here soon, right? And so, pardon me there. Um, it's definitely going to consolidate there soon, you know? And so... Uh, that's just my opinion, though, when it comes to, to audio. Uh, I'm holding. I'm not going to sell it anytime soon. Let's see what else is going on. You know, of course, Veracity is still appearing in one of the trending searches, and that's true. Here about three days ago, four days ago, um, what was it? It was the most popular search on both CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap. Uh, not only that, but I want to say, what else was the news? Uh, Veracity. 
Oh, right here with Facebook and Google running 73% of all digital ad, uh, ad revenues, advertisers and content creators are beholden to their rules and processes, some of which lead to content creators not being paid properly and advertisers paying for bot views, uh, proof of view solves for this. So to me, the question here is, do you think Google or Facebook is going to try to compete? and just not accept, or do you think that they're going to try to join with this, right? And if they don't join, I believe Veracity would just eat them alive. I mean, uh, it's not about how big Facebook is in this situation. It's about how much industries are paying for bots to watch their advertisement, right? That's really where this comes down to. And Mark Zuckerberg has admitted that the way that Facebook revenues is off of ads, right? The way that YouTube revenues is off of advertisement and demanding a large percentage of content creators cuts. Uh, Google, the same thing, right? Now, Google is an umbrella company, so they have other ways in which they make money, but I know that they make a lot of money through their advertisement, right? And, and if we can't verify that people versus bots are watching it, yeah, people are going to ultimately stop, you know, using their services for that reason, or at least limiting what they're, you know, how much they're putting out there. So... Yeah, just remember, Theta is a smart contract platform. You know, when we look at the actual roadmap, and it talks about cross-chain uh, cross bridge to Ethereum for DEX, NFTs, and dApps, that's literally a smart contract platform. That's literally what that is, right? And so to me, here in the beginning of 2022, I think we're going to see it jump just like we saw Solana and Phantom. I, I, I'm being dead serious. You know, if we were to go right here, I think this is an average peak, uh, 30, we'll say $35, and it hit, what, I think 200 at its all-time height here recently. Um, 194, so roughly about a... About a 400, 500% gain, give or take, you know, uh, I would say. And in Theta right now, you know, I think if we were to look at, you know, let's look at their year, let's look at their average, I would say probably right around, because uh, we have to take into this account. So I would probably say right around the 750 marker, you know. So if we were to do 400 to 500% of that, we're talking about $28 to $35 a coin. Um, and very similar for T Fuel, right? When it comes to the way that they grow, I mean, again, they are slightly different with their growth. Uh, you can clearly tell that with the exchanges, but typically speaking, when Theta pumps, T Fuel pumps, and that's what I mean by they're correlated. So, yeah, both both Theta and Veracity has patents. So Theta has five patents. Veracity has two, and I believe that they're working on their third one. So they have the proof of view concept patent uh, and then they have the verifying of the nfts that they've incorporated into the first one right um and you know that's technically their second patent um you know whether you want to argue that technically that's one because it's the first one that's just incorporating it you know it, it's two concepts i would say it's two different you know patents But yeah, so like I said, I mean, you know, if we were to look at Theta as far as uh, the priming of the chart, you know, let's go to the year to date, right? And so, we, uh, you know, let's go to KuCoin because I think I can draw on their, uh, and my nose is itchy for some reason. All right. Do they not have a night mode? Yeah. Yeah, so if we go to the chart, so remember, I'm not a technical analysis uh, analyst, part of me. I'm not an expert in technical analysis by no means. However, I have been doing a lot of studies into it and trying to get better at it. And I did call the Solana a tip of 150 here recently. I mean, almost on the dot. Uh, and then even called the fact that they were going to consolidate down by about 10 to 15% before, you know, returning back to his height. Uh, and then if we go back to my call on CeeLo, I did the same thing. You know, it was just looking too good. That was when I had a lot of Telcoin people hate on me, which... You know, looking back, I guess at the end of the day, I can look at them and say, I was right, you were wrong. And so that's just how it's going to be. But yeah, so, you know, if we were to look at the actual, um, let's see, right here. So we take the, 
what is it tip uh, the bottom of the uh the lows and we go up high to the dips right there you know we're looking at Let's get to 15. We'll go a little bit under because it's going to be hard. There we go. So this is a 451% climb, right? And, you know, usually when it comes to the rule of thumb, you know, we can kind of see where this is, you know, kind of returning back to its height a little bit higher, right? And if we keep, you know, doing the same thing, we'll see, you know, generally speaking, right a good consolidation back down if we go to 1590 and we start looking at where we are now you know we're a little bit under the 50 percent we're about 60 to 70 percent consolidation right and that generally speaking happened from this 1590 down to this 690 right and even three dollars and 50 cents i think at one point in time let me look at this um what is this yep right here three dollars and 70 cents i think is what it was touching that day and i'm sure if we go into the hour it would probably be lower in some of these instances depending on the the exchange right but i think that if we were to take this compared to this point uh where we were at which is you know technically less than two dollars but 450 percent gain and we do the same thing from where it's at here why this keeps happening and I, I can't view I don't know why uh, I need to get a better uh I need to get a better chart one base maybe I know they have a pretty good uh charting system Uh, uh, what is it, Ernester? No, I have not heard of Petrusu. Is that how you say that? Yeah, if, if it's not, pardon me. But yeah, I've not heard about that. Uh, I can definitely look into it, though. Um, I don't know, am I, am I going to have to sign in? Oh, sweet. I do not want to sign in. What was this? Uh, $4.37. So, yeah. So, you know, to me, if we were to experience about a, you know, a, let's see, from $2.40, we'll say, all the way up to $15. So, we'll say $16. So we'll say 800% growth right there. We'll say, we, you know, I think we're going to see a very similar growth, right? Um, so, we're talking about, yeah, it goes right back to the $32 a coin is what I'm seeing, right, by the... Uh, come the first quarter of 2022 when the smart contract comes out. Um, and I think that if we look at Solana, if we look at Cardano, if we look at Phantom, if we look at CeeLo, if we look at all these other smart contract platforms, right, Ethereum for crying out loud, and I'm sure once Pulse launch, we'll see the same thing with Pulse. Uh, they all experience this kind of growth. It's because people want to get early in on that DeFi. The earlier you get, the better APR you get. Uh, the more coins you get in early, that means that you have a higher percentage of the pie, so you get a larger percentage of that, um, of that DeFi money. Um, so yeah, I, I, again, it makes sense to me, right? If we go to Coin Market Cal, what a lot of these crypto tubers do is they'll go two months out before a mainnet launch, before there's a major update, and they'll start buying these coins. And then roughly about a month out, they'll start making videos about it, right? And people are buying in early, thinking that they're getting in early, right? And the crypto tubers, you know, not all of them by no means, and this isn't a, a jab at any of them, but you know, they're making profit already because their followers are buying in. And then the mainnet launch happens, or the smart contract platform happens and people FOMOs in and we see these parabolic climbs like we did with Solana and then the early investors say all right well it's time to cash out you know let's go ahead and and, and you know pull our funds uh, to me this is where I'm going to say no I'm going to be staking theta there's only one billion so the more I have the more value I have I truly believe in the end they have to me they're just too big to fail at this point it's just a matter of time till this project really takes wings and flies and so I mean, it's already kind of flying, in my opinion. I mean, a, you know, what is it, a billion-dollar company? Uh, this is Cardano. I don't want to look at that. Uh, $7 billion company. So, I mean, you know, 
technically, and, and again, if we were to go to, um, we won't even say Solana, right? Because I think that Solana pushed out um, XRP uh, this afternoon and in, in as far as that third place go, right? So let's look at DOT, right? Um, what's their market cap? Uh, 31 billion, right? Uh, so again, if we look at Theta, and let's just say Theta captures a very similar market cap. Um, yeah, I mean, again, that puts it at $32 a coin. Again, I don't know why my numbers keep coming to this, you know, 25 to 32. I truly believe that's where this coin can sit in a year and a half time. So, yeah. Try using TradingView for charting. I will. Well, I'll probably have to do that after the live stream. I'm not the, the best uh, technical, you know, analyst. Like I said, um, most of it's just little things again I, i'm pretty sure i've got lucky on most of the calls that i've got here recently it's not my forte and I'm, I'm just letting all of you know that so do not ever get me confused with you know with an actual expert by by no means and so uh, as far as oasis network i believe they're known as what rose if i'm not mistaken uh i i know what was it don't they have aren't they working with uh ubt and frontier I, yep, it is Rose. I was right about that. Uh, let's check them out. Um, are they an Oracle service? No, private enabled blockchain platform for open finance and responsible data economy. Let's see what they're all about. I mean, I've heard of Polychain Labs and then the A16Z. Let's see. Okay, so I'm not saying that I'm not saying that uh, Oasis Network is doing this by no means. Okay, uh, I do know that when it comes to their partnerships, you have to be very careful. Um, I know there are some projects out there that will use Amazon West, uh, web services to host their website and in their head, they'll be like, oh, we're backed by Amazon because we're using their product. And so they clearly, you know, like us. Um, and I think that's very, you know, misleading and definitely I would consider a, you know, a deception, but they do have Binance backing them. I mean, they have Chainlink, you know, I don't personally use the Binance network, even though I know it's one of the largest ones. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've just always considered it a little bit too wild, wild west. Uh, I've always been an Ethereum fan, but um, they do have Binance backing them, Chainlink backing them. I mean, you know, you can't deny that if that's true. Uh, Insure Network, Tidal, which are all polka dot, so is Shift. I don't know if Shift is, but I know that these are. Uh, and then Darwinian, I've seen that in several things. I don't know about any of these others. I mean, you have Urine Finance, I know about that. Um, and I just saw this take off maybe a month ago when it hit the exchange. I have not done any research into it, but I did see it take off. All right, so we have node operators. I don't know, XRP Capital, Anchor, okay. Again, I, you know, just being honest with you, this isn't to say that this is negative. I just, I, I've not heard a lot of these people. I've just never heard of these companies before. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, I think there are several platforms out there now that are aiming for this whole private DeFi concept. Um, let's check out how long Rose has been. Four cents to 20. I mean, is believe it or not, it's experiencing similar growth as the other smart contract platforms. I mean, so... I mean, this goes right in hand in hand with what I was saying. I mean, look at Cardano. It did the same thing. Look at Solana. It did the same thing. It experiences nice, nice growth. 
you know, by about what? Uh, it went from four cents up to, you know, on average, we'll say, and up to 24, so about a 600% growth. And then from there, it, you know, five to what seems to be almost 30, so about another 600% growth. So, so, I mean, if it keeps repeating, it's only at a 400 million market cap. So clearly, I just hit 400 million on the live stream. I mean, clearly there's people in, you know, invested into it. I mean, that's, I wouldn't consider that a small market cap by no means fully diluted being 2.6 billion. Uh, now, again, that doesn't really, you know, I think Richard Hart has said this in a lot of debates and he's right. You know, if this, this doesn't really determine the value of the the network and the coin. Sure, it helps, you know, us kind of break down a, a, a price per se, but, you know, to capture the value, you know, what is value? Um, and I'm sure I'm, poorly summarizing what he said, but I think that's one piece that he has said that I kind of agree with. Um, I don't know. I'm not bullish or bearish on Oasis. I'm going to be honest. I don't know enough about it to be able to comment truly that it's a good investment or not. Yeah, VIP. Yeah, yeah. by the way, uh, VIP, I'm working on a video right now uh, for the Patreon group uh, on how to... Uh, be better prepared for the bear run. So I've been uh, testing out a uh, an idea and it's been working out pretty good. And I was able to, uh, by pure luck, I did it early enough to really jump in a lot of these dips. And so, um, yeah, I'll be posting a Patreon video probably, if not tonight, tomorrow. So stay tuned for that, man. Yeah, let's, let me check out Suitors. Let me, let's check it out. All right, so we have a $22 million market cap. Um, it's mineable. That's kind of cool. Wait a minute. Proof of stake. Hmm. Let's check out how this works. Private payment infrastructure for cryptocurrencies. Well, that's kind of cool. They're working on what seems to be what? Matic? I wonder what the cost of sending is going to be. I've not heard of them, but now in fairness, they, they do have... They don't really have any more roadmap, do they? So I see that they're partnering up with Theta, Harmony One, Chainlink, Neo, Matic. Uh, is that Elrond? I think it is Elrond. Near Protocol. I don't know the rest offhand, but. Okay, I mean, hey, Theta Labs is backing it. Elrond, which is supposed to be major. Read this first. All right, let's see. Zcash was the first to implement and apply SNARK in the DCRK process to set up a set of heavy SNARK presidents and secure the risk of effectively constant proof generation and further reduce the locking up has been adopted in practice. Proofs to implement any risks to the DR set up with the So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I would say that they're, I would say this is bullish. I mean, I would say this is very similar to Monero or even Zcash, like just like they describe kind of buildups. I mean, so if we go check out Zcash, let's get rid of that. 
where is this sitting at? The five cents has a 22 million market cap. Matter of fact, I just want to see where I can buy this. I'm probably gonna buy buy this, dude. KuCoin. Mm. I'm just kind of been on a fall. Let's go look at Monero. I know that was I love how there's so many forks of this coin. Yes, I mean, you know, if we go back to Monero when it first started, I'm sure if we compare the market, the total supply to the other one, matter of fact, I think we can. Um What was it called? Let's see, it's super. So we have what, 10 billion market cap? Seventeen, okay. So about one tenth supply. So I mean, you know, if it were to take the same kind of pace as Monero did, you're talking about you know twenty six dollars a coin, give or take, you know, a few bucks there. You know, if it were to get the same kind of you know potential as Monero, and the fact that they're backed by Theta, you know, and all of these other industries, I mean, that do that actually might be a promising project. You know, look, I'm going to be honest, I've never really heard about this project i'm sure i've heard about it but just not really dug into it but this is a bullish project i mean i'm, I'm gonna look more into it before i just go buy obviously i would never i would never recommend that to anyone but i mean this this looks like it's holding potential there's no doubt about it i would need to i would really need to read through uh this white paper to make sure that there's nothing that's sticking out that doesn't make sense to me uh, again i mean even though i'm in school for computer science that doesn't mean i'm the best you know computer scientist out there i'm sure that there's thousands million well maybe not a million but you know hundreds of thousands of them that's better than me uh, but yeah I'll, I'll do more digging on this one I and mean, this one looks like it's going to be a a pretty interesting coin that might even succeed in its own right especially with the partnership that it has set up with i mean the good thing about theta labs uh, you know saying that they they consider this a yeah half a cent you're right part of me um you know in their compliments i mean Theta is a serious project to me, so and so is Elrod. So the fact that both of them have major players coming out from their respected, you know, project talking about, hey, yeah, um, Sudarusu or Suder is a uh, you know a promising project. Yeah, I think that's pretty bullish, man. <laughs> yeah, man. If you want to just you know tip me like I don't know like forty k, that's up to you, bro. Uh, no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You you don't have to do that. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it looks like it's it, it looks like a promising project. Again, I would need to do more research. I don't know too too much about privacy coins and how they work um, when it comes to whether you know, it, you know how they how, how do they pump? Is it like other coins are they just attached or pegged to the Ethereum? And so when Ethereum pumps, it pumps. Um, you know, I, I just I don't know how their revenue works really, right? Other than maybe transaction costs, like your typical crypto fees. Um, but yeah, I mean, at least everything else surrounding it looks bullish. All right, guys, it's been roughly about one hour. I'll take one more project, one more coin. Any questions? If you have it, I'll be more than happy to answer. If not, uh, I'm going to call it a night. Go eat some grub with my wife and uh, enjoy the rest of it. Hey, I appreciate it, Bobby Powers. I definitely appreciate it, man. Uh, slowly but surely, we're climbing. And I want to say again, you know, thank you to everyone joining up, watching the videos. Without all of you, I would literally just be a guy talking into a microphone. No joke. 
Uh, so I, I enjoy having the uh, Telegram channel uh, lively. I have a lot of people in there constantly chatting and talking. So yeah, it's my pleasure. It really is. I enjoy this. I enjoy y'all. So, all right, Ben Flair, you've got the last coin. Let's check this out. Stratos or Stratos, like the stratosphere. Oh, this is GitHub. What am I doing? All right, let's go check out the site. Let's see if we can get a quick summary from Coin Market Cap. All right. I don't care if you use my cookies. I really don't. That's what this computer is for. And they have a cool site. I mean, I'm wrong. Um, let me check out their... The, the reason why I'm going through this relatively quick is I, I've looked into a lot of data storage projects from Filecoin, Filecache, Arweave, Storage, um, SS. Um, I think it's called Super Shard is what that is. Uh, and there are several promising ones out there, like Filecache, Filecoin, Super Shard, uh, Arweaver, right? A crust for the uh, Kazuma and Polkadot network. So if you're looking into data storage, you know, I would recommend starting with those per se. Uh, none of them other than Filecoin has a large, well, Arweaver did climb here recently. Uh, but none of them have a large market cap comparatively to Filecoin. Um, but let me look at this. Again, their site looks pretty cool to me. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Hmm. They had to have the uh, minority here, the, the one woman to make it seem like they're not just a misogynistic group of leaders. Just joking, everyone. See what kind of Shaw networks they're working with. Okay, so for those who are curious, what I'm looking up right now. Right. Um, I'm trying to see what kind of data storage they're going to be if their uh, hosting services like this is saying or a little bit of both. The reason why I say that is when it comes to processing data uh, on blockchain, as far as uh, storing it goes, you typically have what they known as the what is known as a seal process layer. So if you take Filecoin and Filecache as an example, as an example, right, Filecoin has a 32 gig uh, ceiling layer process and that's why it's so expensive to actually process the file coin right and then not just that but I want to say that they have an 11 layer system uh, that makes it even more consuming and so the question here uh, for me to be able to say if Stratos is you know bearish or maybe bullish is to really read through the actual technology side of the white paper here you know what a lot of people don't understand and to see if they're, you know, what they're processing. I mean, because if they're coming forward going, hey, we're running a Shaw 256. I mean, okay, get the crap out of here, right? Or, hey, we're coming out here with a, uh, you know, a 32 gig seal. It's like, okay, you're just copying um, a file coin. If they come out here with like, oh, no, you need to buy this node and it's like a virtual machine, then it sounds like they might be copying um, ICP and no, not the insane clown policy, but the internet computer. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a very layout to very similar layout to most storage protocols. Here it goes. The Byzantine. Yeah. So 
So they have three, three different systems here. All right, here it goes. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm not bearish or bullish on them, but th this is until they can come back and update this. And I get it, you know, being fair to them, they did announce right here, you know, hey, once we get the once we get the third party computing resources met, et cetera, et cetera, or excuse me, once the mainnet is launched, then they'll start looking into the third party computing resources. Uh, this to me is a, hey, I need to know this before I'm investing into it. Again, you know, as a as a person who does understand some forms of this technology, you know, if, if they're coming out saying, hey, we're going to pump a 32G ceiling uh, limit, and then, you know, it's going to be a, a in an 11 layer system, that's no different than Filecoin, and Filecoin has massive exploitations right now. Uh, again, that's not to say, you know, Stratos, well, they are, they are working with Cosmos. Okay. Hmm. I mean, there may be some bullish sign there, right? I mean, I, I personally like Cosmos. I think that that's a very undervalued cryptocurrency right now for multiple reasons, right? They act very similar to a parachain, but, you know, as a port. Um, I know that every smart chain typically does have its own data storage. So, again, DOT has Crust, for example. Um, file cache could be argued Ethereum. A file or file coin, pardon me. File cash is its own blockchain. Our Weaver is what the Solana or AVAX? I can't remember which one. I would have to look further into it. Um, so I don't know. I mean, this one, I, I, I'm i gonna be honest, I'm gonna say I don't have enough to say yes or no. I do know I need to look to see what the actual breakdown of their blocks are as far as how they're computing and how they're storing it. That you know, at what point do they say, okay, this block is full. We need to you know, we need to go ahead and store it, uh, and what kind of resources are are required? And the reason why that's very important is because if you don't have enough node runners or people running nodes, to, uh, as far as if the incentive is not worth the people running the nodes, so it takes more time and costs more than they actually ever get back. Uh, you know, the network's not going to run, but this is being built for the, what seems to be the Cosmos network and Cosmos again, I think is a, I think is a sleeping giant. And so, um, I agree that data is a Godzilla. I think matter of fact, that's the NFT. There's an NFT called the Theta Zilla, I think is what it is. And dude, it's pretty expensive right now, but it looks sick as it, you know, sick as beep. Uh, Jared, what, uh, I don't, I look, man, I'm not a financial advisor, so, you know, you know do what you think is best, but I, I'm not selling my T fuel or theta. So if you stake theta and T fuel com as far as a combination, so you stake the theta, you earn your T fuel, you have enough T fuel, you know, more than 10,000 to start the staking the, the 10,000. And then you compound what you're earning off the theta onto the, the T fuel and, and so forth with what you're earning off the T fuel. I believe that we have people doing the math already uh, after doing it for a year now or six months. And the average APR for theta is roughly 12%, which, hey, in my opinion, is 12 times better than the USDT rate of growth, right? So, uh, and theta can always keep growing. So imagine having 100 theta and you get 12% at the end of the year, that's 12 theta. If theta hits $50 a coin, that's $600 you just made by holding on to it. Now, I know Bitcoin is 50000 but just remember, uh, somebody asked earlier, um, yeah, so if you got both stake, then like I said, you should be getting roughly about 114 to 12.8% APR, depending on how much of which, right, um, and how fast your nodes are running and things like that, but uh, somebody did ask earlier, what kind of growth can we get from Ethereum compared to Theta, right, and I think that this is even more true 
uh, for uh, Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin, let's just say that it does get to 100,000 or let's just say it does get to 150,000. You know, that means it went from a 1 trillion market cap to a 3 trillion market cap. You know, just think about that. You know, that's a lot of money coming in randomly, you know, the unexpected, I should say, not randomly, unexpected. You know, but let's just say it does hit 150,000. That's 300% your growth. Right. So you just turn 50,000 into 150,000. Wow. Good job. You know, again, no, seriously, good job. You know, that's a lot of money. I'm not here being facetious, you know, but you no, know, let's just say that, that you put that same $50,000 into theta right now at $7 on average, and it does hit $32. Like I believe it will within the next two years. You know, I think it's going to hit 20 before the end of the year. I stand, stand by that. You know, that's right there uh, times 300. So already you've, you've outpaced Bitcoin with that. You know, and if it does go to 32, now you're talking about a times, you know, uh, what is that? Times five, uh, times four and a half. So now you've almost doubled what Bitcoin will get you. Um, so, yeah, look, man, nothing against Bitcoin, but I think, you know, it's an outdated blockchain. It's the least advanced crypto on the market. I think that, you know, if the money to be made is going to be in the smart contract platforms, the DeFi platforms. Uh, that act that actually have a applicable and friendly user interface like Theta, for example, or have a patent or true solution. So if you look at Veracity, if you look at Theta, if you look at XRP, if you look at all of these that are you know having massive community backing, it's because they have real utility, they have real real purpose, they have real solution for it. You know, Bitcoin is is just the digital gold. It is literally just a, a, a store of value. You know, the question here is, would I rather put my money into an item that is both a store of value and a utility coin or just store of value, right? I mean, the answer to me is going to be the first always, right? Immediately, it's like, hey, that you're going to get more growth out of that. And so... Yeah, man. I mean, I don't have any, I think y'all can see my screen right now. So y'all know I haven't been typing in little answers or clues. I just, I read about cryptocurrencies all day, every day. You know I mean, it's literally probably one third of my life at this point, aside from work, school, and then, you know, uh, my house and my wife and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, I try to be as honest as I can, Bobby. I really can. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a fortune teller. I'm not a, a soothsayer. You know, if I feel like the market is kind of in a weird vibe, I'll say it like, hey, look, I don't really know what's going on. I'm, you know, anyone that sits there and tell you, oh, you know, don't worry, it's going to hit this times a billion tomorrow. You know, they're full of crap. They're 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 living off of hopium. You know, that's what it is. And so um, and I just you know, that's how people get wrecked. And so. All right. Um athletic preparation I, I probably won't show your comment not because i'm all for censorship but i just don't want to show penises in my chat so uh sorry <laughs> all right guys well it is three minutes till 8 30 but at my time uh, it's been a great night. I appreciate everyone tuning in. Um, without further ado, this is all... Actually, let me go ahead and do one thing. There we go. I do like my background. I don't know why. I just feel like it's a 2030 studio apartment that's ran off of cryptocurrency right now. But no, uh, I do want to say to everyone again, thank you so much for tuning in, checking out this video. Uh, this is Altcoins FM signing out. 